All right, everyone, here we go on the Cy Rusher Tracks e-bike. Ooh, that's a big snake. Woo, <laughs> freak me out. Uh, we're gonna do throttle only on this hill. This is what I do in the beginning of all my videos, if you're familiar with my channel, to see what kind of speed we can maintain with throttle only going up this hill. 10, nine miles an hour, eight miles an hour. So eight miles an hour is the lowest that it dropped to up this hill with throttle only, so really good power here. Now, this is a torque sensor e-bike. It's 52 volt, 750 watt Bafang motor. And this bike does have dual suspension. It has an air suspension in the back and a hydraulic suspension in the front, which seems really nice. So we're gonna go over all the specs and features of this bike today. We're gonna see how it performs going up some other hills. We're gonna see what the max speed of this bike is and just see how it performs overall. And if you guys are interested in picking one of these up after watching this video and feel like this bike is the right bike for you, then I will leave a link down below in the description for you where you can see more details on the bike and pick one up for yourself. That will be an affiliate link and I will receive a small commission if you use that link, which helps support the channel. So I wanna thank you in advance. I really appreciate the support. So it looks like there's some road construction here. Hopefully it doesn't get too bad and hopefully these roads stay uh, unblocked. I already had to go around one detour to make it to my hill test. So far, these brakes seem really good just using the back brake here going down this hill at 25 miles an hour and these are logan hydraulic disc brakes and 180 millimeter rotors in both the front and the rear of the bike really good stopping power here i can still lock them up <laughs> our little guinea hens so i could smell the brakes burning just slightly but Obviously that's normal. I just come down that hill with just the back brakes going 25 miles an hour, but there were no squeaks and squeals whatsoever. Now I'm not gonna go through each individual pedal assist level here because this bike has a torque sensor. So the more effort you put into the pedals, the more you're gonna get out of it. So right now I'm in pedal assist five. Let me give you guys a different view here. So pedal assist five, and you can see I'm able to cruise at an easy 12 miles an hour because I'm not putting a lot of work into the pedals. And we're gonna hit this slight hill down here, but as soon as I start putting more effort into the pedals, the more I'm gonna get out of this bike because it is a torque sensor e-bike. Typically on a cadence sensor bike, as soon as you start turning those cranks, the motor takes off at full power, whatever power level you have it set at. And on a torque sensor, the more effort you put in, the more you'll get out. So it makes it feel more like a traditional bicycle, more like a regular bike. So here we go, are going up the slight incline. I'm in pedal assist five, like I said, putting just a little bit of effort in, going real slow. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put more effort into it, leaving the pedal assist the same in five. I'm gonna push harder and you can see it's going faster. Now I'm not putting a lot of effort in at all, I'm gonna go ahead, bump it down to one and try that test again, just so you can see. Now I'm in pedal assist one. Now it's gonna limit my power to level one, but it's gonna work the same. The less effort I put in, the less I'll get out of it. Going six miles an hour and I'm gonna push a little harder. So it's not giving me a whole lot more because I'm in level one, but you can see here, I could bump it to level five, hardly push it all. But now when I push harder, it's gonna take off. So that's what's really nice about a torque sensor e-bike. Typically they're more money, but it makes you feel like you're more with the bike when you're riding, Make, makes you feel like you're riding more of a traditional bicycle. So that's usually really nice and I really like uh, torque sensors when you have a throttle to override the sensor, which this does. So at any time, let me stop at the stop sign here. Anytime I can hit this throttle right here and override those pedals. If I don't want to pedal, if I don't want to put the effort in, I can use just this throttle. Woo, scared the crap out of me coming around that corner. <laughs> Woo, these back roads sometimes are pretty scary. You gotta watch for deer and vehicles and any other rodents that want to run out on the front of the road, like those guinea hens. 
So we're testing out the brakes now. Almost 30 miles an hour. And I can lock them up easily if I wanted to. Gonna go ahead and feather them down here at the bottom. Very good brakes though. No complaints whatsoever. Feather them a little bit, get them hot. And see if we can lock them up. Oh yeah, easily. All right, so now we're gonna see what kind of speed we can get with just throttle. I'm in pedal assist five. And it looks like it's gonna cut at 20 miles per hour with throttle, which is what the legal limit is for a class two e-bike. Now, obviously, if I start pedaling, it's gonna go ahead and go past that 20 miles an hour, but it's gonna depend on how hard you pedal because like I said before, it is a torque sensor, but we're gonna check out max speed when we get down here onto a level stretch of ground so that we can get an accurate test. And during this test, I'm 175 pounds for anyone that's wondering. So if your weight is more than this or less than this, you might get more or less performance out of the bike. But let's test out some of the suspension down here. And if any of you remember my um, Hemiway Cobra Pro test that I did on that bike, this bike has the same exact shock in the rear. It's just designed a little different the way it mounts in there. Oh, this is like butter over those bumps. I couldn't even tell they were there. Nice. So the seat does feel a little stiff, but the suspension does take out those bumps pretty good. Now the throttle is limited to your pedal assist level. So if you're in level one, you're not gonna have full throttle and not gonna be able to hit 20 miles per hour in level one. So if you want max speed and power out of your throttle, you have to be in pedal assist five. So let's go down to one and see what kind of speed we can maintain with throttle in one. Let's slow down here. All right, this'll work. Let's see what kind of speed we can maintain. Looks like about 10 miles per hour in pedal assist one. Actually going about 11 now, but that's that was still downhill slightly. Feels like it kicked back in at about eight miles an hour here on this incline. So I'd say somewhere around eight miles an hour or so. So let's see what the max speed is with pedal assist. Now this bike does have a nine speed Shimano shifter, which is really nice. Typically most bikes have a seven, sometimes an eight speed. Well, this one does have a nine speed and it's 11 to 32 tooth. So let's try throttle only here again. And looks like 19 miles an hour on the, dis on the uh, GPS, 20 miles an hour on the display. There we go, 20 miles an hour on GPS. Now I'm gonna start pedaling and it's not gonna bump up until I let go of the throttle let go of the throttle and you can see there it instantly jumped up and I'm not even putting a whole lot of effort in right now 25 miles an hour 28 on the display now I'm gonna push a little harder 27 on the 28 I'm still not pushing hard 29 30 30 mile 31 holy cow I'm not even really pushing that hard a little bit hard I don't think I'd be able to maintain this for a very long time, but easily 30 miles an hour. Very easy 30 mile an hour. That is awesome. 30 on the display, 27 now I'm going uphill slightly. But this gives you a nice workout for riding an e-bike that you want to get that workout. It what and, and it's I feel like it's perfect. Some bikes you have to push way, way too hard to try to hit the max speed. This one, you don't have to put a ton of effort into it, but you do have to put some into it. In my opinion, really nice. So let's see what kind of speed we can maintain going up this hill. And this is with pedaling, not using a throttle. 25, 24, 23, and I'm in ninth gear. I could downshift to make it a little easier to pedal. Still maintaining 20. Now, if I don't want to pedal, I could go ahead and hit the throttle and just use throttle now. But that will limit me to 20 miles an hour. Now, I did feel a slight delay when I went from pedal to throttle. 
Let's go back the other way. Right, see how this suspension is down here when I cross these train tracks. I don't know, hitting them at almost 30 miles an hour. Oh, nothing. Like butter. Today'd be a beautiful day to be out on that water, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, so now let's check out the specs and details on the Sire Rusher tracks. So up here on the handlebars, you have a set of rubber grips, nothing real special, but they do the job. Next to that, you have the headlight button and a horn, and then your control pad for controlling your pedal assist levels up and down, and then a button on the top right-hand side for your trip meter, max speed, average speed, and odometer. Now the trip meter so far on this trip on the bike is reading 4.9 miles and on the GPS is 4.71. So that seems to be just slightly off, not too bad in almost five miles. So I can live with that. Over here on the right hand side of the handlebars, you have a half grip twist throttle and your nine speed Shimano shifter, which leads down to the Shimano out this derailleur and the 11 to 32 tooth nine speed cassette. Coming up the KMC chain, we have a 52 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of Welgo aluminum pedals. Now, one thing I wanna mention about this chain, when I first got this bike and took it for the first ride, the chain popped off and I was like, what the heck, what's going on? Why is it popping off? I thought it needed a derailleur adjustment. Well, here, the pin that puts the chain together right here, this little black pin, the chain wasn't together all the way and it was causing it to have a slight bend in it when it hit that spot on this front chain ring and that's what caused it to pop off i reached out to Cy rusher and they sent me a new chain no problem and the tool to put it on i did have to wait about two weeks for that but got it put back on and it has been working flawlessly since but i did want to mention it that might be something you want to check on when you get yours to make sure that your chain is together all the way right where that darker link is right there because there's not really a master link that's how they put it together it's just pressed together so now for the fun part on the front of the bike you have a double crown hydraulic suspension with a compression adjustment on the right with a lockout and a preload adjuster on the left and then in the center of the bike here, you have a DNM AO38 air suspension. You have your port here to put the air in. You have a lockout in the center here where you can lock this rear suspension out. And you also have a little turn dowel in the center there where you can make it slower or faster on the rebound there when it's compressed. Now with me being 175 pounds, I left it a little bit soft so that it just comes up real soft. I don't really like it being springy, but you could dial that into your needs, which is really nice. Up here in the center of the bike, you have a nice color display that shows you your speed, battery percentage, along with battery meter bars there. Pretty much the same display as the Cy Rusher Komodo that I reviewed. And that Cy Rusher Komodo that I reviewed was also a very, very soft, comfortable bike with the dual suspension that it had whenever I reviewed it. Now on this suspension here, everything seems really beefy. The frame's beefy, everything is really, really strong. However, the bike does come in weighing 92 pounds. So that's something you might wanna keep in mind. The battery is about 14 pounds of that. So if you remove the battery, you can get it down to around 78 pounds. But with the battery, it is 92 two pounds on their website they state that it's like 70 some pounds with the battery i don't know where they got that information at i actually weighed the bike and i got 92 with the battery so now for stopping power like i said earlier it's using a set of logan hydraulic disc brakes coming down to 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike and this bike is sitting on a pair of kenda crusade 26 by 4 inch wire bead 5 to 30 psi tires they have a nice tread pattern on them now there is no reflective strip and there is a headlight on the front for safety which is really nice and allows you for a little bit of night riding however there is no integrated rear brake light they do give you this light that goes underneath the seat you pull this tab out and then you're able to turn the light on and off for a rear tail light but it is battery operated and it is not ran off the internal battery so that's kind of a bummer. Would have been nice to see an integrated tail light somehow, but then you would have had to put a mount on here. 
I could see why they did this. I think they meant for this to be more of an off-road bike. I don't think they really wanted to put a mount or anything on there to get it out there. Although it does look like there's some mounts here that you could mount a rack on it in the future, which would be nice to see. Even though a lot of people might buy this for off-road use, I always like to put racks on to carry extra gear. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here real quick. As I was editing this video, I actually received the rack for the back and the fenders. Now this thing, comes packaged really awesome just like their bike was when it come packaged in this foam as you can see here the bike was the same way packaged really well and this prevented all the damage in shipping there was no damage to the bike whatsoever when i unboxed this thing and put it together and assembly was very easy on it but this rack and fenders here you can see everything is really heavy duty looking and it is aluminum the rear rack and also the front and rear fender and they are aluminum. So they will not rust, which is really nice and really nice and sturdy there. So that's what you get if you get the rear rack and fender kit. All right, so I got the rear rack and the fenders on. This is what it looks like, really nice. However, I did have one problem when I was installing that and that was the back fender was really tough, giving me a really hard time. You can see here that it's real close to the frame. Well, the fender was too far down and it was actually hitting the frame and wasn't mounting correctly. So I actually had to take a grinder and grind both corners of these fenders down to keep it away from here. And then I was able to mount it on there good. And I also bent this tab down slightly with a crescent wrench just a little bit. And now it's not touching. The first time I ground it down, I left a little too long. And every time I went like this, I could hear it rattling right there. So I grinded some more down. I finally got it, but they need to update that a little bit to get it to fit a little easier. But overall, really nice heavy duty rack, heavy duty fenders, like I said, aluminum. So if you need to carry bags like that for a lot of your gear, then I definitely do recommend this rack. Now, one thing I do want to mention is if you have bigger feet, you can see this back rack sticks out a little bit up here. The heel of your foot might clip that a little bit. When you're pedaling, depending on where your feet are at and how big your feet are on those pedals. Something I noticed when I took it for a test ride, so I figured I'd mention it. Let's get back to it. For power, this bike's using a 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery housed inside the frame right here. And it's using a 25 amp controller to power the 750 watt Bafang rear hub motor. And so far, it seems to have plenty of power. For the seat height on this bike, the minimum seat height is 35 inches and the maximum seat height is about 39 and a quarter inches. Now you can get that seat down about another one and a quarter inches if you would cut the post shorter, but the post comes down here and stops about right here, right above the suspension because the way the shock goes through the frame and mounts back here, the seat post has to stop here. So if you'd cut a little bit off there, you could actually get it to go down just a little bit more. Right now, it's at the lowest height and it's at 35 inches. And with me being just over 5'7", this bike is pretty much perfect with the seat height where it's at. I have a 30 inch inseam. Up here on the center of the frame, you have a nice spot to mount a water bottle holder, which is really nice. And it has a pretty low step over height. I actually forgot to measure that, but I'll put that measurement up here on the screen for all of you. And it kind of angles up. I'll kind of maybe get a point about right here, right in the center because that's probably where your foot's gonna be coming over. So that's the measurement I'll put up there for all of you. And I, like I said before, this thing is really pretty beefy. And right here, this is solid aluminum here, going from the top of this bar here down to this lower one for extra support. I mean, that is just really beefy. This is all real beefy right in here, really thick in here. There's some supports. So everything seems nice and strong. But one thing to keep in mind about the suspension with this being a double crown suspension is you are gonna be a little bit limited on your turning radius here because the bump stops here will hit the frame. So you are just a little bit limited on how tight you can turn on this bike. And for those of you that really wanna get crazy and try to make it up hills that you can't, this bike does have a walk mode. If the hill's too steep, get off the bike, hold down the bottom button and it will start to take off so that you can walk next to it, but it will assist itself to help you out. Now, as far as the wire management goes up here on the front, everything seems to be wrapped pretty well. Everything goes into the frame on both sides, so you don't see any wiring going down underneath the frame. One thing that I would have liked to have seen was maybe a little bit more wrap instead of these small wraps here and here and here. Maybe this whole thing would have been wrapped down to here would have been nice, and this whole thing wrapped down coming down into here 
possibly. Now that is gonna make it easier if you ever had to get to your connectors and had to do anything with the wiring, it not being completely wrapped up like that, but it would have made it maybe a little bit cleaner in my opinion, but I could get that stuff cheap on Amazon. And if I can find a link for it, I'll put that down below as well. If you guys are interested in getting any, any of the wiring wrap, it's fairly usually fairly cheap. Oh, and all my accessories will be down there as well. If you guys are interested in the cell phone holder that I always use, the bags I always use, alarms, bike locks, things like that, it'll all be down below. So please check those links out and please use them if you want to help support the channel. But overall so far, this has been a sweet ride, but let's get back on the ride test, hit a few more hills and see how this performs on the way back to the house. Let's try out the suspension going off some curbs here. Very nice. Nice and smooth. I mean, even one handed going right up and down these curbs, no problem. I mean, it, I, I'm not gonna lie guys, the suspension is pretty nice. Do not try this at home though, one-handed. All right, here we go, the steepest hill in town. And I'm gonna go ahead and do just throttle right now. See how far we can get. See if it takes me all the way up. Hmm, not bad. It's actually pulling me right up with just throttle. Five miles an hour. Never drop below five miles an hour with just throttle. So not too bad at all. And I'm gonna go ahead and start pedaling. All right, here's the last long hill before I get to my house. Now I'm gonna stay in pedal assist five not going to use the throttle right away and we're going to see how it is with this torque sensor going up this hill putting a little bit of effort into it going about 11 miles per hour right now not super steep but i mean it's fairly steep maybe you could see where i come from down there but putting just a little bit of effort in and put a little bit more in see if we could pick up speed here and this would definitely be easier if i was hanging on with two arms or two hands. <laughs> All right, so now my legs are burning just slightly. Let's try some throttle. And there was no delay there. So real nice with that torque sensor. And like I said, this is what's nice about having a throttle that overrides the torque sensor. So right now you have to put effort in to get effort out of the motor. But if you get tired, just override it with the throttle and you can just use the throttle. But I do recommend to still help pedal it just slightly up the hills. And I believe I'm in sixth or seventh gear right now. All right guys, so now I'm just cruising down the road on the way home so I can get home a little quicker. 31 miles an hour, 30. So this bike maintains a good 30 miles an hour pretty easily. All right, everyone, I made it back home safe and sound. A little out of breath because I was pedaling my butt off to get home quick, but there is the Cy Rusher tracks. Let me know down below what you guys thought, how you thought it performed, and if you have any questions, I'd really appreciate it. And those comments really do help my channel out, so please leave one. And please consider subscribing if you found this video interesting and helpful. And check out some other e-bike videos if you want to learn more about e-bikes or just cool things in general, like this gazebo that I just put up a few weeks ago. But consider subscribing, and I will see you all around on the next one. Like I said, links down below for more information if you guys are interested. Thanks for watching. Oh, and in just over seven miles on that trip, 
it shows I only used about 4% of battery. Now it did take a little bit of time for that percentage to come down, so I'm not quite sure how they have that program to register that, but overall, 20 amp hour, 52 volt battery, you should get tons of range out of it. Now I'll see you around on the next one. Whew.